Greetings, warriors. Hey, um, I wanted to make a video about my contributions to the World of Warcraft because for a long time it was the most important thing to me for like 10 years at least. It was the only, only video game I ever played and it, it was the basis of everything I was working on creatively. And um, I wanted to outline what those things were because... <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, some people just play a game, right? Well, um, I always take things a bit further. First of all, I had, I had a YouTube channel that I started, and I started creating Machinima, which I learned. Uh, it's a whole new form of animation where you video capture uh, actors in the game. Since the game is controlled, and all the players in the game are controlled by different people in real life all over the world, you can get together and create scenes and edit them and there was also bootleg software that if you had the game installed on your computer you could use that library of models and animations and objects and everything and effects just it was incredible the power that you had but every time they would update the damn game these things started to glitch out and um, that's why there was a major curve in uh, popularity uh, creators making stuff on on youtube but in the, in the beginning it, it was real easy to do and you could do it on a small computer and um it was simple and then they started making you know cool stuff where you could the camera could pan around and, and fly and stuff while you're in the actual game with live actors it was just the the tools that were being created were just outstanding and People that wanted to direct and create stuff now have had an outlet for that. And uh, there was 11 million people playing World of Warcraft at the time. So that was a huge genre and fan base and community. And uh, it had its stars. And um, it, it was just a great, a great um, experience when it was around. But it's gone now. <laughs> Um, you know, most of the magic, but, um, it's still there like a frozen sword that somebody needs to pull out of the ice. But anyway, um, <clears throat> what I was getting at was, uh, I, I say that because I, I wanted, I want, I want, uh, y'all to know how much Warcraft still means to me because I still have a lot of stories invested in that universe and those people that created the stuff are still alive and well. They've just stopped YouTubing and stuff and gotten away from all the drama, which is great. So anyway, um, I made a bunch, I made a website and I, I started a guild and it was role, a role playing guild. Now, MMORPGs have role playing, and is role playing is part of it. You know, uh, it all came from D and D anyway. So, um, <clears throat> I was really big into not role playing so much like create. Uh, I'm not big on on the typical role playing where you're sitting there with your friends and pretending to be a furry or whatever the hell that that shit is, but. <clears throat> What I, what I was interested in as a writer is capturing stories from real, from, from a group of different people. Because when you tell a story, you want to see it through the, 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 the character's eyes. And if one person writes a story, that all the characters are going to kind of sound the same. So what I wanted to do is get a group of people to all create a back, like if if you wanted to join my guild, you had to write a backstory for your character. And if you didn't know what you wanted as a backstory for your character, you could look at what, what I already had. And I had a, uh, what I called the roster. And I was at the top, and then it was all ranked, and we all had rank, and, and uh, <clears throat> all kinds of badges and, and stuff, like in the real military. And... <clears throat> um, and 
it also was in the game, the same rank was in the game. You could do the same thing in, in the interface that the game gave you. So I had this um, role-playing website called the Knights of Nordrazil. Um, headquarters. That's what it was, headquarters. And uh, <laughs> it's been a while. And um, it had all kinds of stuff. You could, you could watch f- all these videos that people were coming out. I'd just uh, embed them in an archive. But, um, so to join the guild, you had to write a backstory for your character, and uh, I used all these characters that people were giving me, and of course I would screen capture it and and, and spice up their little spot in the roster, but I I was also writing the Knights of Nordrazil saga, which is a ten-part story, and it ends in a giant finale. And I needed lots of filler to flesh it all out. And so I needed all these fresh characters. And when you ask other people to create stuff, you're always going to get stuff that you never would have thought of. And it's great because um, it gives you a lot of realist. There's nothing like drawing from real life, you know, uh, real people, different people. And uh, we could all PVC. I was an RPer, but we, like I was saying, we didn't role play and talk. We we created these characters. That's all you had to do. <clears throat> and then, um, and then they became part of the, the website, and uh, other people could draw from that. But also, um, it was a, a PVP RP, which meant we. We went out into the real world, not not doing. Um, not we did a couple of instances, but we didn't like fighting digital monsters. We wanted to fight real people, so we would go to crossroads and raid that town, or, or raid a town and just create as much panic and disorder amongst the enemy faction as possible. There was the horde and the alliance, and we were in the alliance. So, um, I was the leader of this. You know, I was King Avarice, and uh, I had all these uh, A-V-E-R-I-S. I thought that was a pretty cool name. And um, so we ganged up on, on stuff, and I would make videos of that. And uh, and I became notorious in the real game on the server Nordrazil, N-O-R-D-R-A-S-S-I-L-L. That's the name of the big world tree and all this stuff in the game. Anyway, um, so it's all wrapped up in my story, uh, and in the in the game, I was actually notorious for for killing lots of noobs and uh, actually going out there like a soldier and role playing with my characters, like in a military setting. You know, like we would all <clears throat> pretend like it was a real thing happening, and you know, have a good time. At the same time, not take it too seriously, you know, not take it seriously at all. <clears throat> and um, yeah, mind you, this is all stuff I, I was doing while I was smoking pot, so I was a major pothead. This is a great time for me to smoke pot. I was working on the computer all day doing digital artwork, and then I would relax and play Warcraft for a few hours, and it was just great. So anyway, I had this uh, guild of friends that we knew for years. And it was fun as hell to be to log in and see these guys and meet up with them and go do stuff and then make videos of it and the website and I was so I was doing a lot of stuff and then that kind of died out and it evolved into me doing comics because the uh, Blizzard the people that make World of Warcraft put out a comic called um, hold on. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I was recording. <laughs> they put out a uh, comic book contest, <clears throat> and uh, I thought that was great. Who does that? And and there's millions of people watching it. So on their website, they had, they hosted a contest, and I I I entered it every time. There was like one every couple months, I think, and um, or one every month. They would pick uh, first place, second place, third place, honorable mention. And I won <clears throat> first place once, and I won honor. I think third place or honorable mention um, the rest of the times. 
like four times all together. I won. And um, they even sent me the World of Warcraft board game. Like it was uh, Risk in Warcraft uh, form. Oh, it was crazy. And uh, that was worth 50 bucks. So I thought, wow, I actually won a legitimate contest. So that actually got went on my resume as a, an award-winning cartoonist now. And um, I put that up online. And, and then, uh, so I started making that and just for fun. And then eventually um, this woman named Michelle Morrow somehow got injected into the limelight of the Blizzard community. And um, <clears throat> as, <clears throat> as an e-host. And um, I could tell she was inserted. And, um, <clears throat> if you know, what I, if you, if you don't know what I mean, then we'll just skip that. Don't worry about it. She was, um, uh, let's say, uh, kind of like, I think hired <clears throat> to be a face and a voice <clears throat> and act like a fan, but, uh, was probably inducted into doing that job nefariously, or, you know, at least hired and signed an NDA and all that stuff. Kind of you know, it's just business, it's not real, and uh, that kind of stuff, you know, it, it it doesn't last very long, you know, it glimmers for a little while and then it's gone, poof. Real stuff is like <clears throat> Swifty, who makes a YouTube uh, channel and um, shows people I mean, he's totally Chad, and he shows people how to be Chad in real life and in the game. And I thought that was really cool. And he's very wholesome. Like the parents would approve of his, uh, little kids watching this guy, which they do because it's a, it's a game for 12-year-olds and up. <laughs> anyway, um, so I also started making a comic. It inspired me to start making comics. Um, uh, underground comics, and I started making a comic called Swifty, and writing that, and um, so I've got that in the works, and I'm gonna use other personalities like Asmongold and Majira as other characters in that comic book, book uh, and Panzer. Anyway, um, so that's where the artwork thing was going. I was also on Twitter with Michelle Morrow with this comic strip. And, um, cause I had the last one I made was her posting the neck, uh, like the 20, um, I think, I think it was the 2030, um, Super Bowl with some other guy, uh, who's a Warcraft host. And, um, she's, She's um she's having to name the characters and they all have these real disgusting names and cuz they've replaced football with World of Warcraft arena tournaments and uh anyway so she not only thought that was hilarious and responded to it on Twitter but she later said you know I couldn't say anything uh until now but um it, you were almost prophetic because you I had just got signed with um, that cable channel, from, um, sports, whatever it's called, uh, to be an esports commentator. And that's a whole new form of entertainment that's coming to America. That's, believe me, it's already taken off in South Korea and uh, Northern Europe. Uh, but uh, that's why I made the comic because it, that that's the irony of the comic. You know, it's got multiple layers. My comics have multiple layers of humor. If you're intelligent, you know that um, sports is, is becoming bigger than... Uh, I mean, esports is becoming bigger than sports. And a lot of controversy came out after that. It is it, Like, can we even call... Uh, after I made that comic, and she tweeted it, <laughs> there was this... Immediately, this big uh, thing uh, about calling esports an actual sport and that's when that all started, uh, because um, maybe it will turn into, maybe it will overtake football as the main event. Anyway, because um, it already is in other other countries. So I did that, and then um, 
the Warcraft movie came out, and it was directed by Duncan Jones, who I know to be the son of David Bowie, and whose name used to be Zoe Bowie when he was born. And um, he went in, and the son of uh, Angela Bowie, who I used to date. So David Bowie and Angela Angela Bowie produced David Bowie and created Ziggy Stardust, that character which is a male version of her. She was a very uh, crazy, just amazing, oh, itchy, glamorous, highfalutin, crazy woman like that knew all kinds of uh, rich people. Like She was in there, man. You know, she wrote a book on David Bowie and, uh, and, and, her, and um, her husband at, at the time, she you know, she was all <clears throat> involved in all that stuff, had the same last name. Anyway, it, it's a crazy story how I got involved with her, but anyway, she I was that's a whole other story. Uh, so Angie was my girlfriend and I had lots of great sex with her and that's basically all it was. And I was like twenty twenty three or no twenty <laughs> 2021 20, or something. I was just about to join the army. Anyway, um, and that's why I broke up with her is because I joined the army. But um, so when this movie came out, I tweeted to Duncan Jones. I said I used to date his, his mom. <laughs> and uh, I didn't get any response from that. But then I tweeted him again when he tweeted something uh, about rich, you know, some about having a jacuzzi on an airplane or something like that. I said something snarky about, uh, is that all that rich people think about and stuff like that? Because he should have been directing the movie at the time, right? He's been getting all this hype and all these people are just, I guess he's a real quiet guy, but, but he responded to me with something snarky back that was pretty funny, actually. And uh, that that turned a lot of heads. They were like, wow, who's this guy that Duncan Jones talks, that, you know, talks to? Because, you know, I was not only friends with his mom, but his sister and uh, I know a lot of things that most people don't know about that family. But anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, there was that, and then um, I guess that's about it. Um, so, But I'd say that's quite a bit of stuff for, for just 10 years of playing the game. And, you know, it really helped me out career-wise with the comics and getting me into that and it really helped me with writing because of all the stuff I was doing with my guild and putting together and all the things I learned about people and how to how to how to be a guild leader and and create all that stuff around it with people was in real time with real people and make the the videos that was a very a powerful learning experience for me and the seeds and the beginning uh, the foundation for a lot of stuff that's going to be coming up soon once I get my real life squared away. And I am. I got a great boat and a great car and a great job, and, and I live in a great place. Um, but I'm still a low level. I need to make a lot. Of, I need to make a certain amount of money to get my boat from Canada into America. I'm in Buffalo, New York, and it's in Ontario, Canada. It's literally 60 miles away. But I can't go into Canada, and I need somebody. It doesn't matter anyway. I need a truck company to bring it in here. You can't bring it over the water because it's got a leak, and it needs to be transported on a truck. And so I need a truck to bring it into me. And I need a broker, which is going to cost 500 bucks. And the truck is going to cost 1500 bucks, And the broker is going to help the trucker get all the paperwork uh squared away so there's not any problem with customs it's not easy getting a big boat into the country that's for sure and that's why i'm here in buffalo and that's why i was in the last places because i just keep following the boats uh, wherever there's a good deal on boats or a good place for boats to be that's where i'll be um but started out in san diego and then San Francisco, Richardson Bay, where I, but I had a, <coughs> a shitty little sailboat, but I'm about to have a really nice, epic mount, as they say, in World of Warcraft. 
and it's just that I think uh, it's it's like creatively it's helped me, but it's also helped me spiritually in the sense that um, I I look at the life like the game, and I try to win life like I win the game, and I just took that same mentality into the real world, step by step. I mean, you need gold, you need an epic mount, you need reputation, you need skills, you need talent. These are all things in the game. You need to go grind, you need to, uh, you know, you <clears throat> and real-time strategy games help too, like Command and Conquer, because it shows you that you need a base, and you need to go get resources, and you need, there are certain s- stages to things that you do to help you win the game, because you're in a real-time, life is a real-time strategy. It's also an MMORPG, very much so. So, uh, I highly encourage people to get into Warcraft and create a character that is who they want to be, so they can practice being who they want to be. And uh, it's it's a nice, safe place where nobody can hurt each other in reality and you can do and say what you want and you learn how to build up a character in every if you use all the uh, mechanics of the game and then you apply that in the mechanics of the real world you will win in the real world that's all I'm trying to say and so that's what it's done for me Um, I I started playing the game late I was 35 when I started playing it and now I'm 51 so that's, um, what, 50, 20, uh, 15, <laughs> sorry, 15, I'm bad at my, uh, 15, 15, 16 years, right? Yeah, 30, okay, 36, so four, uh, yeah, like 14, 15 years. And if a 14 year old, started doing, if I started doing, uh, playing that game when I was 14, I probably would be as successful as I am now, you know, when I was 30, who knows, or 30 year olds that are doing it now, I just think it's good for them, I highly encourage that, but it's, it's done a lot, it's done wonders for me, and I, you know, I'm, I'm not, uh, sad that I started playing it late, because, I'm part of a generation that was here before that. And I learned how to use my imagination without visual tools like that. Um, so I'm very thankful for being Generation X. Anyway, <clears throat> that that was the uh, discussion here on this video. My contribution to World of Warcraft is still going on strong. Peace out.